Hello, friend. I'm Classic, and I'd like to take you on a journey with a sleep story of the visual novel Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Before we begin our tale, let us get comfortable first. Snuggle in your covers and relax. Take a deep breath in and then slowly exhale out. Take another breath in and then exhale out. Now that we are ready, let us begin our story. Dad. Dad, wake up. Let's pretend to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all of my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of their living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Huh? What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Yeah. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? <laughs> oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Mm. Right, yep. Definitely repress that memory. And this was you in your horse face. Uh. Dad... I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. Ouch, kid. The Scommunist Manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Uh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Ugh. Dad, Emma R's been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. Alright, 
Emma P was the one who pooped her pants during a sleepover. Dad. Dad, that was me. I did that. Oh, oh. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P. She never told anyone, though. True blue that Emma R. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. It is a picture of a man holding a tiny little baby Amanda that says, I love you, Amanda. I finally decide to break the silence. This was the day we adopted you. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big. Just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course, I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. And I didn't know what to do. But your father... Oh, man. He holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen him, he says. It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Uh. He was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss him. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Ah. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm? Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Hey! Hey! Remember when I broke the back window? We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Huh. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away, and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rear view mirror. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to, so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know... Amanda? You know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not going to happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown, and the for sale sign is still in the yard. <laughs> Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? You know it. Thank you for moving us to an area where the dog to person ratio is very high. 
I only want what's best for you. I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I enter of conversations to yell, Dog! To rocket way up. I mean, you do that a lot all... all right. Hey, it's a dog! Uh. Wait, false alarm. It was just a funny shaped rock. If you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to that park around the corner. Amanda and I begin a stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street. The flowers are in bloom. And the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Huh? Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in that stroll over there? Government operative. Mm. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Oh! A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. I like your necktie. Roof. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Let's pet the dog. But where do I pet the dog? Give him those head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. All smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. I'll catch it with my teeth this next time. You caught me off guard on this round. Not again, not ever again. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. Um, classic. And this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Huh. Hi. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. <laughs> this is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Whoa. Whoa. So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? Yeah, we live in the cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world, yeah. Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Ah. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. 
Yeah, definitely. I... Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Aww. Trying and succeeding? I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Um, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. We're close to the truth, Dad. Let us never again speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic seven parts by Amanda Gamer. We laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. All this sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Classic. Bro. I turn around, and I am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Bro. Bro? Holy, wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow. You look great. Uh, yeah. I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Aw, mm -hmm. thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. How's Ashley doing? I, I mean, Ashley. Ashley's her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley. And, uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude. I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Oh. Ain't life something, bro, right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three? Keg Stan Craig? Oh, oh uh, yeah, it was my old college nickname. Got it because he did a lot of keg stands. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Hmm. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Oh, bro. I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily, I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure, sounds great. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. 
Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why is that? The Craig I know is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time, I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Huh. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Mm. Oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. Huh. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Huh. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Right. Forget our school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what's gonna take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I am a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Ah. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Ah. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Um... The admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Aww. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. Yeah. I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Really? Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and before I forget, MRR and MRP are sleeping over tonight. Ugh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? 
I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick think of plans. S gonna attend a union meeting? Boss man's been riding us bulls too hard. It's time to rise up for our rights. Dad, you're not even going to invite me to the riot? I'm sorry, sweetie. It's an honest day's work for an honest day's riot. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to go out and watch the game. Nice. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. The game. On TV. At somewhere other than here. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <gasps> yes, Dad. Just making sure. Give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, making fun of sports is played out. Oh. All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Ah. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, I totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have fun tonight. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their names. Just as I'm heading toward my room, the doorbell rings. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Hi. I know it's kind of late, but I baked way too many cookies, and I just can't have these in the house or I'll eat them all. Uh, <laughs> oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Yes, hi. I'm classic. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. <laughs> but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Amanda pokes her head out of her room and immediately hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come... She's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, 
I meant... Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no. This is the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is the missus around? Mr. Actually and her... No. Not anymore. He died. Oh. Uh... I'm sorry for your loss. No, no. It's, it's alright. Wow. This is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment. Acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Aww. I'm sorry. Can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Oh. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What'd you say, pal? <laughs> that sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll let you get to bed. See you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Nice. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. You seem nice. Amanda walks in back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where did those cookies go? Aww. They're gone? I'm sorry. Yes. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? The M is... Right. Well, kiddo, I'm gonna go catch the game. Have fun, Dad. Wow. I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. So, I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool. Okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? A big burnt out neon sign hangs above Tiny Dive Bar. Jim and Kim's. Huh? All right, it'll do. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, 
but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Uh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. Um, classic, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game. With ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh... Hmm. Buy a gal a drink? Don't buy Mary a drink. Um, maybe some other time. Uh. Suit yourself, sailor. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I am comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. He sits alone, brooding over a beer and keeping an eye on the game. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. The conversation ends there and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises in his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm classic. I... You must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, You'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? I... No, that'll be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay... You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? Oof, shots fired. I don't like them. Well, that's gonna be a problem. 
Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Classic, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his rugged good looks. Your face is good. Uh, thanks. Wait, I think this is what flirting is. And this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Trying to make friends. I'm new in town. Figured it might be good to put myself out there. You seem pretty cool. The key to being cool is acting like you don't care about anything, but actually care very deeply about everything to the point where it's debilitating. Really? Robert downs the rest of his drink. Of course not. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ah, uh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Hi. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, classic. So are we doing this or what? What? I... You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Smile and nod. Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again, and I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house, or my new house. Oh, right. I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Uh, hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom, 
and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. We'll, uh, talk to you later. Robert cracks a smile. Sure. Your clothes are over there. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember. Amanda. Amanda.